Welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Mass Channel. I'm now going to be answering questions from this paper, which is actually a paper that escaped my attention until one of the viewers sent me um, this paper. I've actually checked on my um, access to the Excel papers and I found it there and I didn't notice it until just today when the student brought my attention to it. This is an unused paper, which I've never seen before, actually, and there's none for any of the other um, like uh, sessions except for P4 and I think S3. Um, those are the only two that I see this thing called unused paper. I don't know what the purpose for it is, why it's there, but this is the unused paper from January 2022. So this is not the paper that was given in January 2020, not the paper that people took, but this is called an unused paper. All right. So whatever it is, I'm going to go through it. I'm going to try and give you access to it with the link as well so that you can do the paper before you watch the videos and then see where you need help. And um, I'll try and do that ASAP before the exam on the 1st of June, which um, today is the 29th of May. Um, of course, that's only relevant for those who are taking it in June 2022. Anyway, I saved the questions question by question, separate video for each question so I can save them according to topic as well as paper in terms of the playlists. So let's get started with question number one. Question number one is about binomial expansion. We have to find the first four terms in the binomial expansion in ascending powers of x of this expression, 2 over the square root of 9 minus 2x, where the modulus of x has to be less than 9 over 2. We have to give each coefficient as a simplified fraction. Okay, so now, what I'm going to do first is get this ready for expansion. So for me to expand it first, I have to uh, write in an index form, and everything should be written as a numerator. So I'll have 2 times 9 minus 2x to the power of negative a half. We know that the square root of something, the square root of something is that thing to the power of a half. And we know that if you have something that's divided, or like 1 over a, a to the power of n, for example, is a to the power of minus n, the reciprocal. So you write the, the negative power for the reciprocal. So that's 2 times 9 minus 2x to the power of negative a half. Now, when I expand this, I cannot expand this because we have a negative and also a fractional. If it's negative or fractional or both, we cannot use the NCR button. So we cannot use the same methods that we use in, in P2. We have to use the formula, which is 1 plus x to the power of n equals 1 plus nx. And this formula is actually in the formula book. Plus n times n minus 1 over 2 factorial times x squared plus n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 um, times over 3 factorial times x cubed. Okay, so the, 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 there has to be a 1 in this position for us to be able to expand. And there's not a 1 in this position. It doesn't matter. That, that doesn't have to be an x. It just has to be an x term. So that's fine for, you know, if there was a 1 here, that would be fine. The x here refers to whatever numbers in this position here. The n refers to whatever power we have. But there must be a 1 here. If there's not a 1 here, then we cannot use this formula. So I have to make this say a 1. So I've got 2 times. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take out 9, and I'll write 1 here. So that's 9 times 1 is 9. And then I will write this as minus 2 over 9x. Nine, 9 times 2 over 9 is going to give you... 2, so it's going to be negative 2x, and then I'm going to close that bracket, and then I'll write to the power of negative a half. That negative a half is applying to both the 9 and this bracket here, but not the 2. Okay, so now, just as we know that a to the power of b, so a times b all to the power of m is the same as a to the power of m times b to the power of m, I can write this as 2 times 2 times 9 to the power of negative a half times 1 minus 2 over 9x to the power of negative a half. Okay, and I know that 9 to the power of negative a half is basically the square 1 over the square root of 9 from the same rules that we learned there, just the other way around. So that's 2 over the square root of 9, which is 3. So that's 2 thirds. So you're left with 2 thirds times 1 minus 2 over 9 x to the power of negative a half. Now, this is in the correct form that we need to use this formula. 
Now the x in the formula just refers to whatever term is in here, including its sign. So it's minus 2 over 9x. That's what the x will stand for in the formula. So if we use the formula, um, I'll start it over here. I have 2, don't forget the 2 thirds outside it. I have 1 plus n. Now n is the power. So it's minus a half times x is this, including the sign. So it's minus 2 over 9 x that's 1 plus n x plus n times n minus 1 now n is negative a half and n minus 1 so I've got to take away from 1 from negative half that's minus 3 over 2 okay over 2 factorial which is 2 times 1 I'll just put 2 times x squared which is minus 2 over 9 x squared so that's 1 2 3 we have one more term left for the, first, for the fourth term, so we have n times n minus 1 times n minus 2. So you have minus a half, take away 1 from that, minus 3 over 2, take away 1 from that, minus 5 over 2. Over 3 factorial, which is 3 times 2, times minus 2 over 9x, all cubed. Okay, that's as far as we need to go because it says uh, the first four terms in the expansion. So this is the first term, the second term, the third term, the fourth term. Okay, so now we've got the two thirds outside the bracket. This is going to give you one. And here you're going to have minus times minus is plus. The twos cancel, you're left with one over nine x. And here you're going to have minus times minus times plus is going to be plus. So it's going to be another positive term. Two negatives make a positive. Square a negative gives you a positive. So you're going to have... I'll, I'm going to write this out first. That's going to give you 3 over 8 times 4 over 81 x squared. I always like to write that separately because sometimes you get confused. So I'll write with that. That's 4 over 81 x squared. And that's going to be positive 3 over 8. And here, the last one, I'll do a similar thing here. This is going to be altogether a ne uh, two, two negatives. So it's going to be positive because you're going to have negative times negative times negative which is negative and negative something cubed is also negative so you'll end up with um, a, a positive negative times negative is positive all of these seem to be positive terms and then you're going to have 3 times 5 which is 15 okay over and you're going to have 2 times 2 times 2 times 3 times 3 in fact what I'll do is I'll cancel out what I can cancel out first so we're going to have the 3 cancelling with this 3 on the numerator. So you'll have basically 5 over 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. That's 16. 5 over 16. And this is going to be, remember, we've used the negative already. So 2 cubed, which is 8, over 9 cubed, which is, I think that's 729. 9 cubed. That gives you 729. So 8 over 729, okay, x cubed. Okay, and that's the four, four terms. Now we have to uh, simplify this. So you're going to have, let's just first simplify them all. That's 1 plus 1 over 9x. That's going to be, that cancels with that, leaving you with 2. 1 and 81 cancel, leave you the 27. So you're left with 1 over 54x squared. And then you have um, 5 of, so this, this cancels with that, leaving you with a 2 and a 1. So you've got plus 5 over, and you've got 2 times 729. That gives you 1,458x cubed. Okay. Um, and now we've got to multiply each term by two thirds. So that's two thirds plus two thirds times one over nine is two over 27 X plus two thirds times uh, two thirds times one over 54. That's going to be two. Um, well, that'll be one over three times 27. Okay. So you're going to have three times 27 gives you 81. So it's one over 81 x squared plus and you're going to have uh, 1458 divided by 2 that's 729 okay so you'll have 5 
over, that will cancel with that, 729 times 3. So 3 times 729 is going to give you 2,187x cubed, and that's as far as we can go. First four terms. So there's the answer to 1 part A. You should be very careful when you do this, that you don't mess up with your signs and your terms and your counseling. You can just put that in your calculator, actually, those parts, no problem. That should be fine as well. Okay, now for part B. Now, this is the result that we got in part A. It says, by substituting x equals 1 into the answer to part A, find an approximation for root 7, giving your answer to four decimal places. So you just have to basically re replace x with 1 into this thing. So you have 2 over the square root of 9 minus 2 times 1 is equal to, or is approximately equal to, okay, because we're giving an approximation, 2 thirds, because this, uh, this continues on, and we've stopped there, of course, 2 thirds plus 2 over 27 times 1 plus 1 over 81 times 1 squared, okay, plus 5 over 2187 times 1 cubed. Of course, those won't change these fractions. This is going to be 2 over the square root of 7 is equal to, now we're going to add these fractions together. I'll just use a calculator for that. So you've got 2 thirds plus 2 over 27 plus 1 over 81 plus 5 over 2187 and that gives you 1652 over 2187 1652 over 2187 so now we want to find an approximation for root 7 so what we can do is we can kind of cross multiply here so you have 2 times 2,187 over 1,652 is equal to root 7. I'm going to give the answer to four decimal places. So let's say root 7 is equal to, let's just put this in the calculator now. Um, we've got 2 times 2 times 2,187 divided by 1,000. 652, and that gives us 2,187 over 826. 2,187 over 826, which is equal to 2.647699. 2.647699 continues on. So to four decimal places, 1, 2, 3, 4, you're left with 2.64. Seven, seven. That's the approximate value of root 7 um, to four decimal places. Okay, so that's how we can deal with that in this type of question. And we know that the value of x equals 1 is within the range of what's acceptable to be put into here. Okay, because we can only put into here the values of x which cause the term that go in the, that goes in this place never to be uh, have a value greater than one so as long as x is less than nine over two this number that goes into this thing which is squared and cubed and raised to another power higher powers that that has to always be less than one so as long as as the magnitude of x is not less than nine over, nine over two the magnitude of that will be less than one and as the terms get bigger and bigger and bigger as the raised to higher and higher powers the terms become negligible so you can just stop it at a certain point and say this is approximately equal to that but if the magnitude of this 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 number that you put in here is greater than one then what's going to be what's going to happen is one or even greater than one what's going to happen is the terms keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger as you go along because when you when you raise numbers which are bigger than one to higher and higher powers their value get bigger and bigger but if you if you raise something like a fraction to the to a big power, the values get smaller and smaller, like like a half to the power of, for example, 4 is like 1 over 16, becomes smaller as the powers get bigger. So that's why as long as this term here has a value that's less than 1, this expansion will be valid. You could stop at a certain point and say this is approximately the same as that. Okay, so that's the reason why 
they have this little condition here. In case you weren't sure, that's the reason why. So now we can see that the value that of x that we've been that we we're using is is actually acceptable because it's less than nine over two. It's the magnitude, so that's fine. And what we can do finally to check to see in case we've made a mistake, we can actually write down or try to find what the square root of seven is in a calculator and see do we get something that is not too far from that, two point six four five seven five. So it's very close. So that's fine. It's not completely out. So we can see that what we've got is 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 a decent approximation. So we haven't done something terribly wrong. If it was like came out to something to be completely different, then we know that we've done something wrong in our steps. So that's the answer to question number one: binomial expansion and using the expansions to approximate, um, you know, values. Okay. So other questions um, from this paper, this January two thousand and twenty-two unused paper. P4 can be found in the playlist that will appear over here. Other questions that are related to binomial expansion in the playlist over here. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link. Thank you for watching and see you soon.